Good morning, this is the Plug Seeker. Welcome to another episode. So today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the renewable energy company, Ecotricity, and their UK motorway charging network, the Electric Highway. Now, when we look at charging today, we take it for granted that we can pretty much drive the length and breadth of the UK in an electric car. Even in my 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf, I've driven from Surrey to Glasgow on a 980 mile round trip with really no problems at all. Uh, incidentally, you can see that video if you look uh, further down in my channel. And although it's not perfect, I would say that the infrastructure in the UK is pretty good these days. So we have 11,320 public charging locations across the UK, and that includes 5,150 rapid chargers. Uh, there are rapid chargers along or nearby to nearly every main motorway route across the country, and these can give an EV driver enough charge to get up to about 80% in 30 minutes, um, and that can facilitate a long distance journey. And we have EVs these days with large batteries which can comfortably do 150 to 250 miles on a single charge. However, it's easy to forget that just 10 years ago, uh, there was almost no public charging infrastructure at all to speak of. And electric cars had much smaller range. And there were very few of them actually on the road. Ecotristy set up the first motorway charging network of its kind in the world for electric cars back in 2011. And in my opinion, the fact that the UK charging infrastructure is as well developed as it is now, and that we have as many EV drivers that we do, does owe a lot to this pioneering move that was done over 10 years ago. Now, Ecotricity is a green energy company in the UK, whose primary business is the generation of 100% renewable electricity. And to tell the story of Ecotricity and how they came to set up the electric highway, you really first need to start by telling the story of its creator. And the man behind Ecotricity uh, is its founder and all-round eco-entrepreneur, Dale Vince. Now, for those of you who have never heard of him, uh, he was born in Yarmouth in the UK and he left school at 15. And in his early years, he was a new age traveller. Um, but he went on to become a successful eco-industrialist and self-made millionaire by setting up wind farms and uh, generating green electricity. So he basically uh, helped kickstart the new global green electricity movement in the UK. His first venture in green electricity started in April 1996, where he started supplying his first customer, the Cheltenham and Gloucester College, with electricity produced um, from landfill gas facility um, just outside Gloucester. However, five years prior to this, Dale had already begun working to build his first windmill. And in December 1996, this went live, producing renewable green electricity from a single 40 meter turbine. And this was capable of 0.5 megawatts per year. He founded the Renewable Energy Company in 1995, a company which would later go on to become Ecotricity. By 2000, he had three turbines and was supplying a capacity of 3.5 megawatts of power per year. Then by 2002, it expanded to six turbines and was now supplying 5.3 megawatts. And up till this point, Ecotricity had only been supplying power to businesses. Um, but from 2003 and with then seven turbines, they started to supply electricity to private homes as well. And by the end of the first year, Ecotricity was supplying green electricity to 3,000 homes uh, with a capacity then of 7.1 megawatts per year. In 2004, Dale Vince received an OBE from the Queen for services to the environment. And in 2007, Ecotricity won the Ashton Award for Sustainable Energy. And he was presented this by Al Gore. By this time, the company now had 29 wind turbines and were supplying 32 megawatts per year. So scroll on to 2013. Ecotricity passed another important milestone. They were now producing 100% of their electricity from fully renewable sources. 
They launched their 100% green electricity tariff to their customers in August 2013. By this stage, they now had an amazing 55 wind turbines, producing a staggering 61.5 megawatts of electricity per year and supplying over 46,000 homes. And ever since, Ecotricity has continued to be a major UK power supplier of green electricity. Dale Vince has also pursued other eco endeavours since, including becoming the chairman of Forest Green Rovers and making them into the world's first vegan eco football club. And there's also uh, Britwind, uh, a company designing and manufacturing British wind turbines. Uh, there's Ecobond Investments. There's Forest Green Sun Company. And also an independent charitable arm of Ecotricity called the Green Britain Foundation. If we fast forward to today, Ecotricity currently has 24 onshore wind parks. In total, they have 74 turbines producing a astounding 87.2 megawatts of green electricity per year. During this time, Dale Vince has gone from an ex-traveller and small one-man business to a successful green eco-industrialist, supplying electricity to thousands of homes and businesses around the country. So that's a bit of background history about how Dale Vince and the Ecotricity company got started. But how did Ecotricity Energy Company come to get involved in the world of electric car charging? In 2008, Dale decided to embark on building the UK's first electric sports car. It was designed to smash the myth that EVs were all boring, geeky, slow milk floats, only to be driven by green eco-warriors and tree huggers. At the time of its inception, Dale Vince explained it was not going to be like the EVs we were all used to. It was not going to be, in his own words, one of those things that Noddy might be proud of, that do 30 miles per hour, but basically a crap. No, this was to be exciting. This was to be a two-seater electric performance sports car. And whilst in development, it was originally called the Zero Carbonista, or sometimes referred to as the wind car, as it was planned to be powered purely by wind electricity. The Nemesis car took a team of Formula One engineers two years and £750,000 to make. This included apparently 350000 of Dale's own personal money. And if you're interested in hearing more about the journey of this car during construction, uh, please check out this YouTube series here uh, by Ecotricity. And I'll put a link to this in the show notes. The Nemesis car was built on the chassis of a Lotus Exige and was apparently purchased off eBay. The Lotus engine was replaced by two electric 125 kilowatt motors and a 36 kilowatt hour battery, giving it a range of about 150 miles. It had a rear free pin fast charger plug on a retractable cable that was incorporated into the bodywork. It was finally complete in 2010 and ready to show the world. Interestingly, one of the first to review the Nemesis car was a certain electric car YouTube channel that had just begun earlier in the year in June. I'm of course referring to the early fully charged show run by Red Dwarf actor and EV enthusiast Robert Llewellyn. In this review, Dale and Robert took the new Nemesis car for a spin. This was in fact only the ninth episode of the early fully charged show and I will also put a link to this video in the show notes. The finished Nemesis car had a top speed of 170 to 200 miles per hour, making it faster than a V12 Ferrari. It could do 0 to 100 miles per hour in 8.5 seconds with 600 Newton meters of instant torque. At the time of its release in 2010, the Nemesis car really only had one other EV in the world capable of competing with it. Its competition came in the form of a US electric sports car that had been released a little earlier in 2008. This had been produced by yet another up-and-coming eco-entrepreneur from a Silicon Valley tech company in California. Obviously, this was Elon Musk, and the car was the first Tesla Roadster. His company, Tesla Motors, had been founded in 2003 and would later simply become Tesla. 
The first Tesla Roadster, interestingly, was also based on a Lotus chassis. In this case, the Lotus LEs. The Tesla Roadster had a longer range than its British cousin at about 240 miles due to its larger 53 kWh battery. Its torque varied from 270 to 400 newton meters, uh, depending on the trim model, the 2.5 Sport being the highest performance model. It had a 0-60 mph time of 4 seconds. However, its top speed came in a little slower at 125 miles per hour. The Tesla Roadster was released on sale in the UK in February 2010. The Nemesis was officially unveiled in autumn 2010, becoming the first electric sports car to ever be built in the UK. However, sadly, the Nemesis prototype never went into further production. But the Nemesis, however, did go on in September 2012 to break the average land speed record for an electric vehicle, achieving 151 miles per hour at the Elvington airfield. So both the Nemesis and the Tesla Roadster were clear demonstrations of what electric cars were now capable of. They had smashed old preconceptions in a time when most EVs were small, low-performance city cars. With the Nemesis car, Dell had conclusively proven in 2010 that an electric car could be cool, fast and travel long distances. Furthermore, in 2010, the stage was set for a new generation of mass production EVs that were just on the horizon and would soon be coming to the UK. In particular, there was a newly designed EV hatchback coming from Japan. This had been designed from the ground up to be built as an electric car for the masses. This, of course, was the Nissan Leaf. It had just been released in Japan and America in December 2010, and others were soon to follow it into the UK, such as Renault's new electric Zoe. So things were ready to start to take off in the UK in 2011. And in the next episode on my channel, I'll be taking a look back in time to see what those first EVs were like and looking at how the electric highway went from its early beginnings to eventually become the network we know today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please don't forget to share it and also subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, thank you for watching. This is the Plug Seeker, signing out. Happy charging, everyone.